everyone. I'm just staring off into space. <laughs> I was looking at who was joining us. Um, so yeah, we are here tonight with Babes with Books and we are talking about a man called Uba this evening. So thank you so much for joining us. Um, as always, if you have questions or comments or anything throughout the night, we will be watching on our Facebook live feed. So please join in the conversation. We are short one babe tonight. Unfortunately, Shauna couldn't make it this evening. So uh, hopefully, uh, she's feeling better, but I do have Miss Maya here. So glad to join you. Yes. I look forward to this every month. Mm -hmm. Me too, me too. So a man called Uba. Yep. Um, hard to know how to pronounce that name, but I know is... I pronounced it for a good six months as O, so yeah. if I if I slip up tonight, that's why. That's okay. It's it's not phonetic. Um, I felt that this was a fantastic book. I'll just hop right in there and say that I thought it was a really good book. Um, it's basically a book about an old curmudgeon man who he has lost his wife and he has in his mind no reason left to live and uh, through a series of fortunate or unfortunate events basically it follows his life before uh, her death and his life with his wife as well as after his wife um, in this little community so um, I won't get into all the details of the book because if you want to read it, you might want to uh, want us not to spoil it, but I will just warn you ahead of time, there might be some spoilers in it. Hopefully they're good spoilers that make you want to read the book. Yeah. So, what did you think, Maya? Did you love the book? Did you hate the book? I really enjoyed this book greatly, actually. Um, I read it for um, a personal book club that I have with friends about six months ago. Um, and I fell in love with Uba in the first five pages. Um, he, he was, I don't know, he just, he was exactly that, that grumpy old man that I think a lot of us know, maybe our grandparents or, you know, a favorite school teacher that you had or someone, right? Like even yourself, you can see him in. Um, and I hope I turn into a grumpy old person like him. I like know. He just... I wanted to hug him. I did too. Really? Yeah, I did too. I really, really enjoyed this book. And then the book goes from, it, it opens with him, but most of the book is about, he lives in this apartment complex and he starts forming relationships with a few other people that live in this apartment complex. Um, and these relationships were just lovely. They were special and kind and um, they were life changing for a number of the people that are in this book as well. And it just, I don't know, it really, I found this book really touching and real as well, though. That was another thing I liked about it, is it felt real. Like, I, I felt like you could walk into this apartment complex in any town mm -hmm. and, and see these relationships happening. So, yeah. So, the, the opening scene in this book is um, Uba goes and he tries to buy a computer. And like many senior citizens trying to buy a computer, he has a lot of trouble understanding the salesperson and he is just distraught by the time he leaves and it's shortly after that that he we we jump right into the fact that he doesn't want to live anymore and he tries to commit suicide yeah so for me that went from I was laughing aloud to all of a sudden oh my god they're actually describing someone committing suicide in this book and not only that he well he fails at first he doesn't a few more times. I'm yeah. not going to tell you whether he succeeds by the end because it might have been a tearjerker and it might not have been. Yeah. But you also don't know in that opening scene the writing by Frederick Backman I loved in this book um, as well. So that was another reason I loved this book because you don't realize his wife has passed away in this first book. And so I'm sorry for that one spoiler is that that magic is, is he's talking about her and he's talking about like oh she turned the heat up and oh she left her shoes there. But it's all these past things that he's dealing with mm -hmm. still. Um, and then he's just still grieving this wife so much. Yeah, um, I remember thinking, oh, okay, he's complaining about dead. Yeah, the love story between them in the flashbacks of his life. Um, I love their love story even. And it's not even that in depth. This book isn't about that. But it was just... I don't know. I, I mean, who doesn't love the idea of the 80-year-olds holding hands on the park bench? So Yeah. Um, well, yeah. going back to what you said about this book feeling very real, we have a, a viewer that's asked, um, what about, is there a specific writing scene 
or a specific piece that you felt made it more real for you? Um, like I said, that first scene grabbed me in this book when he's in that store because even as a young person you feel that frustration in a store and you're trying to communicate and so that felt real but then again it's early in the book it's uh, uh, nearly right away he meets some neighbors because they are trying to back up a trailer and they crash <laughs> Just into his mailbox in. mm -hmm. um, and he's incredibly frustrated and um, trying to keep his cool and uh, that scene right away. It, it hooked me right away actually. And I think for me the stuff that made it real was that he was such an old curmudgeon and I could see all of these scenes unfolding and it wasn't that it was just his internal thoughts and he never acted upon them. I think once you reach that stage in life and you feel free to express your opinion, you don't just say them in your head. No. You actually say them out loud to everybody else and he did that and I thought that was more real than maybe some of the other others that just make it more an internal dialogue yes yeah so um that yeah I I, I felt like the book grabbed me right away and placed me within that complex and, and sometimes books don't get you right there and that's a struggle for me is when it when you're a third of the way in and you're still trying to find your way into the setting or like a character's viewpoint You've lost me by then. Um, I, 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 I'm probably not going to end up liking the book that much, actually. Yeah. Um, I, I think I'm like a, a right away grab. I'm not really willing. So, how to important wait. do you feel then is opening scene in a book going to kind of the writing process? Huge. I, I think it's huge. Do you like scenes that are more action packed? Um, and in this sense, I mean, he's only buying a computer, so it's not an action. Yeah. story but he's actually he's doing, doing something, something you mean rather yeah. than um rather I than do just prefer about. yeah I do think I prefer when you can uh, I think how would I describe this I don't want to be I don't want to be placed in that world say with a description of a setting mm -hmm. or an opening of a you know that kind of thing I feel like a scene you kind of jump right in it's almost like falling into a movie with yeah. it with that opening action scene where is that panning landscape idea um, no I don't feel that as much I'm wondering if um, this has just popped into my head with the whole movie comment do you think our reading tastes have changed a lot over the years because of mass media like it used to be we like literature and that mass literature was the draw that the prides and prejudices of the world the the Lord of the Rings with yeah. the long drawn-out descriptions and, and eloquent words they were super popular and now people like the short chapters lots of action um, hmm not necessarily just plot based but character based with this one kind of yeah. follows a lot of different characters and, and goes do you think movies I, and wanting to see something unfold in your head and seeing kind of having that to compare with has changed what we want in a book I think artistic styles because they have become much more accessible as time has gone on have joined in more ways than one mm -hmm. I also think movies have been impacted by books and I think you could say that by the number of movies that are being made from fictional inspiration. Because they're still doing something that film doesn't. So, um, I think that I'm totally distracted now. I know, these, <laughs> like, these boys in the background are giggling the background. and making noises. <laughs> Sorry. We have um, a team back there. No. Um, fan boys. I think that a lot of art has come together. Even if you think of like art art, like paintings and stuff, you're getting a lot of popular media being brought in those ways that are very... Um, yeah, and yeah, it, it's true. I mean, I pretty much every book, it seems, is being made into a movie. Every book I fall in love with, I'm like, oh, this would make a great movie. Oh, it's coming out next month. <laughs> it's like someone thought of yeah. it like way ages ago. Um, I will I, say... Sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, I think that is kind of a neat mesh of yeah. the arts like you're saying um, and there's always that debate do you like the book or do you like the movie or yeah. is it more you know what I like both yes 
and I I've really come to realize that as I've grown older um, I really used to be like the book is always better than the movie um, I really come to think of them as two that very, was very different valid, things girl. Yeah, <laughs> I've come to think of them as very two very different things. I will say, when I do read a book, there are times when I think, oh, I'd love to see this um, come to life in a different form. But there was a book that was really popular within the last year. Um, and as I was reading it, I thought, I don't like this. This, this sounds like a movie. It, it felt mm -hmm. like I was reading a script rather than a fictional mm -hmm. novel. And at the end, um, the author's write up. That's what his job is actually, is a script, script writer, writer in Hollywood. Um, and this book had been kind of written yeah. intending for that 100%. And I think and it's And I didn't because, enjoy that book. I think it's because as a reader, we expect those little things and we've kind of started to come to the realization that not everything we love in a book is going to make it to the movie. No. And that's why we love the book so much because if you read the book, you get all those nuggets. So if you've written something that is just you scene by nuggets. scene, yeah, you have don't nuggets. get those hidden nuggets. No. And I think that's probably I really miss that. Yeah. yeah, I miss that. So, I mean, there are times I watch a movie, I'm like, oh, I miss that nugget. But, um, yeah, so. So speaking of movie, I'm not sure if any of our viewers have seen the movie, but it is now... Uh, this book is now a movie and it is um, actually a foreign film so it's on Netflix right now and it's all subtitled which is very interesting um, I had a chance to watch the movie I thought that they stayed fairly close to um, the book um, I'm, I like I said I'm not as critical of movies now that leave portions out there was a yeah. few scenes that I wish they had put in the one was the computer purchase because I just laughed and laughed um, during that scene right at the beginning and then the other one was the birthday party where Uva gave um, I can't remember the, the daughter's names but uh, Prava's daughters uh, yeah. she had an older one and a younger one she get, he, they spent an afternoon on the computer and and she had wanted like an iPad or whatever for her, her birthday right? and he gives her one for her yeah. birthday and that, to me that was really special that relationship between the the daughter and Uva mm -hmm. and I guess my question to you is which relationship do you think um, without giving this away affected Uva most or maybe you don't have anything you know. Um, I think the mother, the, the, it was... Prava? Yes, I think Prava and him Prava and form a special bond. The relationship between the child, the daughter and him is sweet, but I think that the relationship between her and him is much more um, realized. Is that a good word to use? Yeah. It, it just, yeah. It Do you think she, a in, in a way, became a surrogate for his wife? Because I think his wife kind of was the 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 grounding factor for him. He, mm -hmm. all throughout his life, tended to um, go off the rails in, in a way, and it was... I don't think he she becomes a surrogate for his wife. That wouldn't be my opinion. I would say it's like a... They don't have children of their own, so maybe almost like that adult-child mm -hmm. relationship where things start changing a bit, that responsibility right. starts transforming and, and you start to meet on that sort of different grounds. Mm -hmm. um, but maybe that's just because I'm struggling to not think of that romantic link that when you have the idea of a wife. But she definitely is a grounding influence for him and a, uh, a comfort. She's a, a huge comfort for him. Mm -hmm. um, so... Yeah. Did you think that? Did you see that? Well, I, I think that he definitely needed someone in his life. Maybe, like, I guess when I say surrogate wife, I, I, I don't think that there was anything romantic there. Yeah. But I think he needed someone in his life that kind of said, you're, this is the way you're supposed to be, Uva. And stop, like, you're, you're watching us on TV. Um, this is the way you're supposed to be, Uva. And stop, um she at one point she just reprimands him it was when the cat with the cat yeah. that he just didn't want anything to do with and uh and then it ends up frozen to the ground one day and she just orders him around him he, he's like you can't bring that in the house and she just yells at him it's like get out of the way and and just puts him yes. in his place and that's it right yeah 
So, um, what question did I have? There is a quote uh, from the author, or it says the author reflects, a time like that comes for all men when they choose what sort of men they want to be. And this is during one of the scenes that are flashing back to his youth and he has to make a decision. Um, do you agree with this sentiment? Um, do you think that there's that moment in people's lives when we make a choice? Do you think that was it for him? Um, I do think there's a moment in people's lives where they decide what, and I, some people never reach that moment, and they kind of, and and it suits them just fine. Um, for me, I think there was that moment in my life. I, I like the, the question, though, because it says there's a time in every man's life yeah. where men have to choose who they want to be, and uh, I'm curious what our viewers think about that as far as the male perspective on that. This was a very male book, I think. Yes. Even though there were strong female characters, yeah. it was about masculinity, it was about who you become as a man, what your choices are, yeah. how you get there, um, and how you kind of keep going. Well, and, and I people. love that it was a drama, a general fiction book that was meant for a male audience. I think yeah. it was really meant for a male audience because there's so yeah. much out there for women in that genre and it seems like men read a lot of mysteries or non-fiction because that's the stuff that really giant is fantasy for them. Tombs that fantasy, of course. 800 pages sci long. Sci-fi. But there's yeah. not a lot of general fiction out there that has nope. like good dramatic stories, mm -hmm. emotional stuff. This one I think is that. Yeah. I have to admit, I liked this book so much. Um, he released a book just this spring. It was called Bear Town, Frederick the mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Really lovely book, too, to pick up, especially Canadian. It is about a small hockey town and then the different characters coming together there. And again, another very masculine general fiction book um, that I, I really enjoyed as well. So I'm yeah. all over Frederick Beckman right now. I think he's, yeah, that's good. Where's he from? He's Swedish. Swedish? Yeah, it's a Swedish book. Yes. That's the name Uba. Although, I have to ask you, did this read... I don't know how to say that. Like, did, did, you, did you realize that it wasn't written by someone, that yeah. English would be their first language? Oh. Or like, that like it wasn't who, North American? Yeah, English that wasn't... Yeah. Because it did not read that way to me. I was really surprised at the end. It translated really well. Yeah. Kind of like, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Like I said, like it could have been an it could have been an apartment block here in Canada. It wasn't like, oh yeah, that's definitely Sweden. Like I don't get what. Yeah. There were some few things with books, the way the community was set up that I was like, okay, yeah, this is definitely not North American yes. infrastructure. So, to but speak. there's some things when you read and you're like, I don't get it. Like. <laughs> Because it's yeah. just so not a part of our daily life. Yeah. I didn't feel that way with this. Well, and I think it's because they they didn't focus on the world. Right. They focused on the people and the interactions. And I think that's actually a really good point. Because I think that it doesn't matter where you are in the world, those relationships translate the same way in every culture. And even um, uh, Provena, mm -hmm. <laughs> being ethnic, is... Uh, a very interesting she I Indonesian I can't yeah. remember we talk about the food that she the country that she's from but I'm sorry I can't remember but she's ethnic and uh, that whole culture that she brings in um, the story just kind of translated really well across all continents and countries I think. did you have a did you prefer the flashbacks of Ove? Uva mm -hmm. sorry or the modern times because one of my questions oh, that i had in here talks about how he goes on a trip with his wife and mm -hmm. spends time helping locals and fixing things mm -hmm. and another large part of the flashbacks are about him building his own house mm -hmm. by himself and i actually don't think that was some of my favorite chapters mm -hmm. um the perseverance of this young man to like go ahead and do it in um the face of judgment and adversity I really like that part where he's building his house yeah so it, I, you know what I don't think I could pick because I really liked Ova Uva <laughs> now you, I know now, you, now you we're combining them <laughs> <laughs> um, I really liked Uv, Ova Ova we can't work it <laughs> I really liked him OVE uh, um, in all of the in, throughout his whole life like we were introduced to him and I right. loved him and I think because I loved him right away as an older gentleman, um, 
I wanted to find out more about earlier yeah. in his life. And so that's why I was so interested in earlier or no, earlier in his life because I wanted to know what made him who he was. Yeah. I, I Talking about this book, because it, it was about six months ago that I read it, um, I consider myself, and in not necessarily a good way sometimes, a bit of a discerning reader. I don't frequently love a book or even like a book. I think out of the eight or ten we've done, um, I think there's been three that I really would like say I liked yeah. a lot or would recommend. And this is one of them, um, 100%. Yeah. Like, I I don't know, just talking about this book makes me remember how special I thought it was when we read it. Um, yeah. yeah, I thought it was just lovely. But then the interesting thing is I liked the one last month, too. So apparently I'm like this. Maybe you're just... And it was about a man, Maybe, maybe you're just getting... Um, I need to find more books along the line. You're, you're more settled into what we pick here. I don't know. We're, we're just doing a better job. Well, I have like two um, books about We have a couple more I'm questions. Oh, we have yeah. questions. Yes, we have questions from our audience. Please, please give us questions. <laughs> um, was he always curmudgeon then? Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's definitely... But um, they do tell us briefly about a childhood that's quite rough. Yes. Um, and that definitely influences who he is. Mm -hmm. He is, but the, no, he the word curmudgeonly that we use for an old person yeah. is more like introverted and isolated for a young person. Yeah. So I, I don't know so. if those are the same words. And I don't think I was he was started. as a little child. Like when, when no. he was just with his father, um, as a young child, he worked on the trains with his dad. And I think that's when he was kind of coming into his own, but because he never really had a childhood, that kind of made him that isolated. Yeah. Well, he was an older soul, right? There you go. Him. Maybe that's it. Yeah. Yeah. And then the other one question I have here is, what is the appeal? Uh, old man yells at Cloud, Dennis the Menace, um, of curmudgeonly old characters. Why do we like those old? Who's the man? Get off my lawn. Well, you know, on Dennis the Menace and and you know, this old man yelling at a cloud. Yes, I don't know. Why Why do we like characters like that so much? I, I For me, I think it's because it reminds us of our grandparents or... I think it makes us have hope for when we're going to be older, too. Makes it feel They're like it's going to be people, okay. You realize that, like, when you get there... I, I'm already there. <laughs> I don't, why do we like these old... Do you know what the funny thing is? But do we like I don't like grumpy, grumpy old women. Yeah, we, we <laughs> I don't like grumpy old women oh, in a true. story. I'm like, you mm. biatch. Like, but a grumpy old man, I'm like, oh, you're so cute. So that's does this, react. this, so is this very, uh, can we get into feminism now? Is this, wow. it's okay for men to be curmudgeonly and old, but it's not okay for women because we have to Yeah, be no, perfect. we want women to be like these like doting tea drinking I'll bake you cookies and yeah. I'll take care of you forever and ever and if you're if you're grumpy as an old as a older woman okay actually I'm, I'm like I'm thinking hard yeah I'm thinking of like an old lady character that we always like I find I think we like the curmudgeonly old man and we like the like distracted somewhat dumb old woman do you know what I mean? Like the lady yeah. who has lipstick on her teeth Again. and she's got her skirt tucked into her stockings and like I'm Why has like society done this to us? Driving Miss Daisy or I'm thinking, what's the other one? Fried green tomatoes. Yeah. Like we like these little old ladies. Well there's that are Grace like, and Frankie. I haven't watched that. Mm. I see well and no one what about absolutely fabulous? That's pretty popular. Mm -hmm. Can we think of a fiction old lady? In a book. No. No. If you have one. Send it we our way. The we only some... old lady fiction that comes to mind is there's an old lady. You know what? Old ladies are usually really mean in fiction. They're like the, the orphanage owners. Or actually, it's interesting. You don't see a lot of older women in fiction because they kill them it's off. not. It's not. It's not okay for women to be old. No, but in our book last month, she was a bit absent-minded. You were a little bit worried about her. She was, you know. She pees her pants at one point, and we liked her. Yeah. But if she'd been curmudgeonly, would we have liked her? Like if she'd been rude? Because he's rude at points. Oh, he's so rude. Like really? Like when we it's say adorable. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> and this is bothering me now. What's the other like grumpy? Like yeah, this is strange. Wow, open up the can of feminism. Murder she wrote. 
is she, is she grumpy? She's not grumpy. She's no. just very smart, very. Uh, yeah, I've no. never watched. Her. I would still call. What about her the who sweet does the Agatha lady. Christie? No, no, no. Who's Miss Marple? Because hmm. she's a, I'm, like I'm Ms. trying Ms. to stick Marple to books. Is still quite sweet. So okay, so we're she's okay. She's grandmothery, yeah. so not curmudgeonly. No, no. I bet there's probably. A, well, no. See, a lot of mystery novels. We like them to be a bit eccentric. Yeah. Because there's a very popular uh, humorous mystery series, uh, Ivanovich, mm -hmm. and that she's got like a crazy grandma in it. Yeah. But if she was a miserable grandma, we wouldn't like it, I don't think. But if she had a miserable grandpa, grumpy old man, like it's okay. See now, thanks. Okay, so. Your I'm challenge, so distracted by this Your challenge now. for next month, because we're almost out of time here, actually. Yeah. Your challenge is, you know, if you can comment on this video, let us know, are there any fictional characters, uh, older women? What do you guys think? Uh, let us know in the comments down below. Is this an issue? Should we be fixing this in society? Or should we just, you know, suck it up? Or are there characters out there that are grumpy old women that people love and adore? And we're just... Find us a wrong. grumpy old woman. Find us something to read with a yeah. grumpy old woman. That's good. Sure. But uh, I think we need to leave it there for... Are we there? We're there. We're How almost... How happen every month? I know. It's, right. You guys are wonderful. Thank you for yeah. your questions. Um, I'd like to thank Olds Community TV for doing our filming and um, for our new wonderful opening. I don't know if you were with us at the very beginning of the show, but um, we have a new opening now. So thank you to Dean at Olds Community TV for that. And also to Pandora's Books, who is giving a $10 gift certificate. Our winner this month is Michael Baird. So congratulations, Michael. You can contact us about uh, picking that up or getting that from us. And I love uh, our helpful sponsors. Yeah, we have some great sponsors. I know. It's wonderful. I just walk in at like 6.50, I sit down, and I get to talk about books for half an hour. It's fantastic. It's a great life. I know. What's next month? Next month, um, there was a series on Netflix that was getting a lot of press called 13 Reasons Why, and it's about teenage suicide. And so I decided to pick a book that um, came out, I'm going with like 15 years ago. It's called Speak. It's by Lori Hels Anderson. Um, it won a number of, I think it won a few awards when it came out, um, and it uh, touches along some of those same serious teenage issues that are going on in our society and that um, definitely need to be addressed, and fiction has been trying to do um, you know, a good job of that. So we're going to read Speak next month. Um, it is a YA novel, so that's another thing that we'll be able to discuss is that um, emerging or emerged genre. And uh, I'm really looking forward to that one. Yeah, I am too. Yeah. So, so if pick you up, speak. It's a nice, uh, it's not too thick. Uh, it's, it's a, a good, good one to get read. through. Yeah. It's a good, well, I mean, summer reads. Don't we think of like happy, go lucky? It's light, it's small, it's fast. Yeah, you could carry it to the beach in your bag. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not like, don't bring any of the thrones to the beach, bring this. Thanks for joining us. See you next month.